how I got a 9 in GCSE maths and a 9 in GCSE further maths and how you can too. Now in this video there are three sections, unique tips, general tips and then further maths tips. And with that let's go on to section one, unique tips. Now in maths it's all well and good doing some questions to practice a certain topic and let's say you come across a certain exam question that you're doing just as practice. You have the knowledge to do this exam question, you may know the equations that you need to use for this exam question but yet you still don't know how to actually answer it properly or you do answer it but then when it's marked you don't get the marks for it. This means you're lacking something called exam technique. Exam technique is your ability to properly attain marks on a question during an exam. There are many ways to deal with this, but the best way for me to deal with a lack of exam technique was writing examples. And ignore the fact that this is my A-level work, the point still comes across that I use my notes and examples to my advantage all throughout A-levels and GCSEs. Now during year 11, as we went over content constantly, there was always a chance to go back to topics that we did earlier. And even for new topics, this method works really well. There's two different ways you can do this, depending on what stage of revision or learning you're at in school. The first way is that during class, your teacher will teach you the content of some maths. It could be maths you've done before, or maths that is new to you, any maths, the teacher will teach you that content. Usually in your classes, they'll probably give some example questions for you to have a go at. And then they may possibly also go over those questions after the class has answered them and show you the right way to do them. If they do this, you must write down every single thing they write down. Even if you got the question completely right, write down the question, write down every single line of working that your teacher put and then highlight it in your book. The second way is writing examples by yourself. If you're doing questions on a topic or you need to learn a certain topic, watch a video by Cobalt Maths or Maths Genie. In those videos, there are always example questions that they decide to answer and they will show you step by step how to answer these questions and get the marks for these questions. Once again, it's the same principle. You write every single thing that they write down and then you highlight it in your notebook. And then in the future, when you're doing your own practice questions on that specific topic. If you go over an exam question and you need just a little bit of a reminder of how to do it because you're not quite sure, you go back and look at the example you wrote on that specific topic and the specific question. So yes, you can write multiple different examples for the same topic because there are different questions in different topics. And by topics, I mean small sections of parts of maths. Not whole massive like chapters in maths, but like small topics in maths. There can be many different questions that they can ask. And you can write an example for each one of those questions if you want. The point is that not even just if you're stuck, but just if you need a reminder for a question that you need to answer, go back and look at the example. And it'll be easy to do so because you would have highlighted it. So it'll be easy to find in your notebook. Of course, there'll be many examples in that notebook. So make sure you label every single example you do by topic. This makes it way easier to memorize the specific ways to answer specific questions, which therefore improves your overall exam technique. Now, I use this a lot in GCSEs, and I mean a lot. And when I say a lot, from the start of year 11, my book was formatted in notes of the lesson and then examples and that was it. And then maybe a section for practice questions, but that was all that was in my book. Notes, examples, practice questions, done. And I've continued doing that for A-levels because it's just such a good method of noting stuff down and then going back to it so you can remember how to do those certain questions and improve your exam technique. Another tip involves using the website Cobalt Maths. Now there are two tips I can give you based on this website. The first tip is that this website has many, many, many questions for each small topic in maths. And I mean hundreds of questions. If you have topics that you don't quite understand yet or you need to do some more practice on, go to Cobalt Maths, find that topic and do every single question on it. And it may seem tedious, it may seem, oh, I know, I already know how to do this question clearly because I keep on getting it right and correct. So there's no point in going on and on and on 
when you know you can answer these questions and the same questions keep on coming up in it again and again. That is how you get answering the question into your head. It will be like a swift motion when you're in the exam because you have done it so many times. You won't even think about the answer you're writing because you have done it so many times by answering that same kind of question over and over again. That specifically is how I got really good at algebra in normal maths and differentiation in further maths. The second way you can use Cobalt Maths to your advantage is the Cobalt Maths 5 a day. Now I've talked about this before but I'm going to say it again because this is a maths dedicated video but it is just so useful to integrate daily maths into your routine. As of the day I'm filming this there's around 85 I think days left until GCSE start and if you were to do Cobalt Maths every single day until GCSEs begin you would have done 425 questions worth of maths just from a simple daily routine. You can choose the difficulty that you can do every single day but it's five questions of maths that you just do and it gives you the answers you mark them see whether you get it right and then move on in this way you can cover a wide variety of different questions across your entire mathematics specification so you'll feel much more ready when GCSEs come by because you would have seen every single thing across your entire specification and you won't be surprised by any type of question that comes up okay so the second section of this video is my general tips now general tips include what most people just tell you to do practice questions I've already talked about them so just do them. You have to do practice questions to get a 9 in maths. There is no other way. Obviously, you're doing it in combinations with the things I'm already telling you to do right now, but you have to do practice questions and you have to do a lot of them to get a 9 in maths and further maths. Another thing is watching videos. Once again, I've already talked about it. Watch videos if you don't understand the topic. And then we have section three, further maths. Now, I'm going to keep this brief because there's only one thing I can add on to the other things which you should also use to revise further maths and this thing is to only revise the topics that are specific to further maths. For example, differentiation is a topic that is specific to further maths and not in the normal maths content. Revise that rather than revising any normal maths further maths overlays because most of the normal maths that comes up in further maths you'll be able to find a way to answer them using your normal math skills so when you're revising for further maths only revise those further math specific topics and there aren't many questions going around for one specific topic so it's really easy to cover the entire further maths spec that is specific to further maths really quickly because there are very few topics really in further maths that aren't already in normal maths. Anyways, those are all the tips I had prepared for you today. I hope they will help in some way in your build up slash revision until GCSEs. After this video, there'll be either GCSE languages or GCSE English language and literature or separately. I, I don't know but we'll see. Please don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss the videos for the other subjects, as well as liking the video to show your support and commenting down below. And with that, have a nice rest of your day.